a wiring diagram is a pictorial representation of an electric circuit, where the elements of the loop and the signal connections, between devices, and the power source are shown in the conventional methods as simplified shapes. A house wiring diagram is thus, a wiring diagram of a house. A house wiring diagram can be a wiring diagram, for any electric circuit in your home, which is drawn most directly, so that it can easily guide the electrician, or yourself, when needed. The diagram consists of connections between elements of the circuit, and their relations, to and from the power source. It takes into account, the dimensions of the room, and the input and output points, keeping in mind the ease of access to those points. All of these drawings were constructed using the software eDrawMax. eDrawMax is the best diagram solution to help you design, create, improve, and achieve your goals. It's an all-in-one graphic software that makes it simple to create floor plans and electrical diagrams. Find it by clicking on the eDrawMax link in my description below. A house wiring diagrams is the visual representation or design of the entire electrical wiring system, or circuitry of a house, or a room, that helps in creating the system to distribute energy that can be used to power the various equipment and appliances around the house. It will aid in the proper installation, and operation of the different elements, included in the design, such as, electrical outlets, the meter base, switches and breakers and more. In this blog, we will talk about the various aspects of a basic house wiring diagram. We will understand what it is, why we need it, what benefits we can gain from it as well as the principles and symbols involved in the whole process. Finally, we will look at some examples, and see how we can draw a house wiring diagram. This house wiring drawing is what I would call the minimum requirement. It shows switches, electrical outlets, lights and receptacles. It indicates where and how the lights are controlled, and from which switches, but leaves the details of how they are connected, to the electrical contractor. As you will see in the following information, details can be added, for example where the feed wires go, and the circuits that are connected to the various feeds. There can be no question as to the importance of a house wiring diagram. But still, we must address the need for using one. It is a vital part of wiring a house. The reasons are as follows. Financial. An electrician can only estimate the amount of wiring needed to set up the electrical system. The house wiring diagram, on the other hand, can give the exact value. Say your electrician does not use a house wiring diagram, this can lead to severe inefficiencies. There can be two possible scenarios. Without an exact amount, your electrician may end up using more wiring, which can lead to wastage and excess installation, which leads to cost overruns. The opposite can also happen, less wiring would mean to spend time buying the remaining wiring that leads to delay of work and ineffective costing. Timescale. Not only finance, but also the time frame of the work gets affected. Without an adequate amount of wiring, you will need to buy more or wait for the new installation to be delivered. It can hamper the time frame and coordination of the work, especially on big projects, like that of an apartment building, or a condominium. Prevent injuries. Whenever working with electrical systems, we are all taught to look out for safety. Injuries can happen anywhere, anytime, and due to many reasons. A useful house wiring diagram can show where the points of danger lie in the whole network. It can help to avoid hazards, open hot wires, and many other such scenarios. An injury would mean time delays as well as an expensive hospital bill. A house wiring diagram thus also serves as a tool to avoiding mishaps. Thus we can say that without a house wiring diagram, installing a proper electrical system is very much an impossible task, even for the most experienced electrician. Wiring diagrams use an array of special symbols that represent various circuit elements, like switches, bulbs, electric outlets, breakers, smoke detectors, and many more. This table lists the most common symbols along with their names. Other than these 26 symbols, there are some lighting, electrical and telecom, and wall, shell or structure symbols that are involved in a house wiring diagram. In fact there is a plethora of symbols, that are currently in use and new ones constantly being introduced to the mix. However, they are usually self-explanatory, especially when a lot of them, will come with side text, that further explains the symbol. To start with, let's look at the details that can be added to the bedroom wiring. Starting with bedroom number 1. Locating the power panel in the garage, the first feed wire will be connected to the two gang switch box in this bedroom next to the door. One switch will control the ceiling light, and the second switch will control the tops of the duplex plugs in the bedroom. Looking at the next two bedrooms, a second circuit will bring power to these rooms, starting at the closest duplex plug of bedroom 3. 
the power will then extend to the two adjoining duplex plugs, as well as bringing power to the bedroom light switch, which controls the overhead light in this bedroom. Because we want to continue the power feed to the light independent of the light switch, we will connect the switch to the bedroom overhead light. With a 14-3 cable wire. This will allow us to drop the feed to the fourth duplex plug in the bedroom. We will carry on this circuit into bedroom number 2, to the closest duplex plug, and then to the overhead light in the bedroom which is switched from a position next to the entrance door. The circuit is also extended to the other two duplex plugs in the bedroom. The light in the closet is being fed from the overhead light in the bedroom. Because the closet light is a pull chain, it does not require a wall switch, however, we can finally feed the last duplex plug in the bedroom from the closet light as shown. We are now going to look at the bathroom wiring in more detail. A third feeder wire is brought in from the power panel in the garage, and connected to the switch box in the main bathroom. We want to add exhaust fans in both bathrooms. For the small bathroom it will be in the light fixture and will come on with the light. But in the main bathroom, we want a separate fan controlled independently from a second switch. We will use a number 14 3 cable from the switch to the main bathroom light in order to carry on a power feed to the smaller bathroom. Power is fed from the two gang switch box to the duplex outlet receptacles in the bathrooms. The duplex plug in the main bathroom is a GFCI, ground fault circuit interrupting, receptacle, which is a code requirement. The receptacle in the smaller bathroom is not required to be a GFCI if it is fed from the load side of the main bathroom receptacle. As shown here. Now we will look at the kitchen, laundry room, and garage wiring diagram. Firstly, I want to unscramble the confusion surrounding the kitchen lights, which are two lights, each controlled by a set of three-way switches. We are going to feed these light circuits at the three-gang switch receptacle next to the garage door, picking up one of the garage duplex receptacles along the way. Let's look at how a three-way switch schematically controls a light. Switch number two is being fed with power from a hot wire connected to its common terminal. Switch number 1's common terminal is connected to the hot terminal of the light. Neutral is connected to the neutral terminal of the light. The carrier terminals of the switches are connected in parallel. A three-way switch is a single pole, double throw type of switch which looks like this, schematically. I am going to color code the wires red that are electrically hot, or at 120 volts for various positions of the switches. With the switches in this position, these are the wires that are hot. As you can see, the light is off. Toggling switch number 1, carries 120 volts all the way to the light. The light is now on. When switch number 2 is toggled, the hot circuit to the light is interrupted, and the light once again is off. Toggling switch number 1, again completes the circuit to the light. The light is once again on. Schematic drawings deal with individual wires, whereas with house wiring we are dealing with cable connections of number 14-2 or number 14-3 cable conductors. Let's see how that works. I have maintained the same connections as the schematic drawing, but this time I am placing the components, the two three-way switches and the light, in separate electrical boxes, as in real life. The electrical box boundaries are indicated by the blue dotted rectangles. The feed wire is the number 14-2, NMD cable, entering the switch box number 2 on the right. A number 14-3, NMD cable, is connected between the switch box number 1, and switch box number 2. The white wire of this cable is not connected to either of the switches, but jumpers the neutral from the feed wire, through to the light. The red and black wires of this number 14-3 cable, are connected to the carrier terminals of each switch. It does not matter, which carrier terminal is connected to which wire. Finally, a number 14 2 cable carries the neutral and the switched hot wire, from the switch box number 2 to the light. Replacing the actual switches, the setup will look more realistic. Now that we have the three-way lights figured out, let's complete this one circuit by picking up the last outlet in the dining room area, and the refrigerator circuit. Bringing the feed from that circuit over to the innermost receptacle in the garage, and then continuing on to feed the switch, which ultimately lights the laundry room area. The last remaining outlet in the dining room area, will be on a separate feed, for no other reason other than we have lots of available circuits. 
The next two feeder circuits will be brought out on number 12 2 wire that is going to be fused with a 20 amp AFCI breaker, or an arc fault circuit interrupter breaker. The dishwasher is going to be fed with a number 14 2 cable, and a separate, 15 amp standard breaker. Next we have to connect the washer and dryer. The dryer load will require a number 10 3 feeder cable, and a 30 amp, double pole breaker. The washer will only require a number 14 2 feeder cable, and a 15 amp single pole breaker. The range load will require a number 8 3 feeder cable, and a 40 amp double pole breaker. Finally, the last outlet plug in the garage will be fed from a separate breaker rated at 15 amp. All of these drawings were constructed using the software eDrawMax. eDrawMax is the best diagram solution to help you design, create, improve, and achieve your goals. It's an all-in-one graphics software that makes it simple to create professional-looking flowcharts, network diagrams, organizational charts, business presentations, building plans, mind maps, fashion designs, UML diagrams, workflows, program structures, electrical diagrams, business forms, clip art, floor plans, project management, directional maps, web design diagrams, electrical diagrams, and data flow diagrams. For this blog, I used a combination of floor plans and electrical diagrams. eDrawMax was super easy to use. With large built-in libraries, and more than 5,000 vector symbols, drawing couldn't be easier. eDrawMax lets you create a wide range of diagrams, using templates, shapes, and drawing tools, while working in an intuitive and familiar Office-style environment. The user interface is just like the style of Microsoft Office. It's easy to learn and use. If you are familiar with MS Office, you will be familiar with eDrawMax quickly. It is also easy to learn. The self-teaching program, with the dynamic help, is designed to be easy enough for anyone to use, with no training, no manual, and a rapid learning curve. Vector shapes, and distinct colors, fonts, shapes, styles, pictures, text, and symbols are available for each diagram object. And, it comes with large built-in libraries, and more than 5,000 vector symbols. Drawing couldn't be easier. Just drag the built-in shapes from the library pane, and drop them on your page. It also includes some built-in business forms, and templates, which allow you to create invoices, fax covers, sales forms, and flyers, quickly. As a final reminder, eDrawMax can be used for the design of, creating, improving, building, and renovating house plans. You can start from scratch, or use one of the thousands of plans in the eDrawMax library. This brings us to the end of the presentation. Remember, for the best choice in diagram drawing software, choose eDrawMax, which can be found by clicking on the eDrawMax link in my description below.